I started myself when I was 12, I fished my first full season. You had uh, Strainman, the fisherman from Limerick City. You had ourselves here in Kona. You had the Newtown fishermen and you had a couple of boats in Mungret as well. As I said, you the reed would keep you going over the winter. You'd have to fish him for the summer. You'd have a few slack months in between. An awful lot of people from Kona, above where we come from, would have been at the reed, you know, reed and fishing like. The traditional way of cutting the reed is dying out. There's only a handful of people in the whole estuary cutting it now, where there could have been up to 40 people. 30 years ago, you know. They like come the first of February, the fishing season will open. You know, in February you'll be fishing for the spring salmon. to be a lot scarce, I know, you know. But, like you catch a spring salmon, the price was better. But there was a few different crews down there now, and um, when the fish was scarce, like, <laughs> then we'd start an old sing song, you know. If there was fish there, it wouldn't be a word, you know. Everyone was just too busy. You could hear them a mile away, like. The Limerick boats, they were rowing down in the morning to fish the flood tide. They'd be out for the day anyway. But um, when they get down near Kona, if they, if they heard anyone singing, they'd know there was no fish there. And so they'd be, kind of, they'd be hoping not to hear anybody singing. Oh, Jesus, it's a Kona crowd are singing, there's nothing there. You know, so <laughs> they were facing the long day like with the prospects of not catching anything, you know. And everything was secretive, of course, then. How many did you get last night? <laughs> you could get any answer for that. It was always a low number. And where were you full of water? <laughs> you would never say where you were if you got a few, you know? Because everyone would want to be there the next time, in, like, so, ah, it's harmless, really, you know, but the weekend, then, when the boys would meet in the pub, today, I'd come out, like, <laughs> so he would start the fresh week again, and the fish could set in different the following week, so it didn't matter what had happened the week before, you know? I'm under the list of person since I was four years of age with my late father, Henry Blackwell. From about 12 years of age on, I would have been fishing with him, you know. You were supposed to be a man at that age, you know, but uh, and you couldn't lie down like you had to keep going. It put me on the mud with the inside line and there's a pole on the inside of the net and he'd have the net mounted on the stern of the gandlo, on the back sheet of the gandlo here. And he'd row out, row in a half circle, or what we call a half moon, because there was a shore net. You have a shore net and you have a drift net, two different nets completely. And he'd row in a half moon, he could row for 50 yards, 80 yards, 100 yards, depending on conditions and tide. And I'd walk the mud with the inside pole, keeping the net close to the mud, the way any fish wouldn't escape on the inside. And you know what I'd get if they did escape, you know. But anyway, and he'd come in and the two of us would meet uh, with the two ends of the net together. There'd be a purse in your net, you'd haul in the two ends of the net and whatever fish you had in were in the purse of the net and into the boat. When the salmon come in from the Atlantic, from once they come to the Cashin River in Ballybunnan, it takes approximately three days before they arrive up here. But that's about the time, depending on the tides. And when they come up to Shannon Estuary then, they will head for any of the tributaries where there's fresh water coming out, you know? And that's how they navigate up. Uh, a gander will float in approximately four inches of water. She's the most suitable on the Shannon Estuary where you have mudflats. They were ideally suited to, to drawing seaweed, fishing, and servicing the islands as well. You take the boats on the River Deal now, 
uh, they're in all pleasure boats. There's nobody working a boat out of the river there now, only myself, nobody else. I'm the only one working a boat out of there. This river is part of my heritage. It has been there all my life, and the Shannon Nestor is there all my life. I'm a man that doesn't travel that much now. I don't go out far and hold or anything. But there's a lot of islands from uh, Kildaisert uh, up to Balnacalli, up to Shannon Airport. To me, that's my own personal haven. As soon as the boat would hit you, we say in the, the spring of the year coming on, you know, you're, something tells you you have to, you have to get out on the water. You have to go fishing. It was passed on from my grandfather, my father, my uncles. They were fishermen. It's, it's something you don't acquire. You can't just come off the road and say, yeah, I'm going to be a fisherman. My father, back in the 40s, like, used to go flat fishing as well, and that would be through the winter months, like. And it pulled down to the Fergus, which is, from this point here, is 18 miles to the mouth of it. They'd fished in for two days, and there'd be three women here in the parish used to sell the flat fish, go around with baskets on their head, selling the fish. And when the women had sold the fish, the men then that would have caught the fish would get a few pounds. Like when we were young, there was nothing in the family like, there were seven of us in family. And uh, the fishing ended on the 19th of July. Like that was the only time when we went to school that, that we had a new pair of boots or a new trousers to put on like. It paid bills. That river kept a lot of people alive. And like, as far as I'd be concerned, we say, I owe an awful lot to the river. The fishermen of, the, of, of this area built all their own boats. What was told to me was that the Viking came up with the idea of the flat bottom boat. There was a little slide like a ski over the mud, which it will. One man could push this over the mud, no bother. You know? There has been very little change in this one to what my father and my uncles and the grandfather built. All the boats around here back in the, up to the 50s were all sail. They'd pull down and they'd come back under sail because we're always a westerly coming up anyway, up to Shannon. You know, you always get home easy. It's the Limerick boats that, that, that use the sail more than anyone because the rest of the boats down below they had only a short pull in, like they were like over the bank type of thing, like Newtown and Kona there, like. Like when there was a three-man boat, you'd have a 14-foot oar on either side. So no matter, no matter what weather you had, you had a stabilising effect all the time. The pleasure I get out of making these, or my workshop, I'd say, is, I mean, you can't measure it, you can't measure it, no. We kind of knew it was our last season in 2006. It kind of didn't really kick in the first year. It was, it was kind of a novelty. Like you're walking down to the bank, you're looking out at the river and you can't go out. You know, and at, at times down there when there's a nice westerly breeze and a good tide running, that, that's what, we, what we'd say now, oh, Jesus, it's very fishy looking. And um, it was kind of strange that we couldn't go out. But it, really, it was the following year that it kind of sunk in, you know. Jesus, like we're not going out no more, you know, and it's been like, it's been part of our lives and all, all the people before us for generations and generations. It was just a thing that was taken for granted. Nobody saw this coming, like you know. You take the few fishermen that's here on the Shannon Estuary. What harm are they doing? They draft in legislation that you can't fish. They 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 offered the, the fishermen six thousand uh, euro yeah. each for their nets, right? Some took it, some refused it, right? No way I take it, because uh, 
that's the legislation they drafted in. But our legislation is that our fathers, our grandfathers never even fished before us. And it's our right to fish. This tradition should, it should not be lost. This is my history. I'd love to be able to say, have someone coming on after me to, but they haven't got interest. And you can't put interest into a person's head if they haven't got it. Up to the day I die, I hope to be at this. It's something that I, that I hope before I go, that I can get back down there. You know.